This is the second part in a short tutorial series in which I show you how to make mixed reality experiences for the MetaQuest 3. In the first part, I showed you how to set up a Unity project for Quest 3 development. We imported Unity's XR Interaction Toolkit and the Unity OpenXR Meta package. We then set up an XR rig and activated pass-through on the main camera. Finally, we dropped a virtual character into our mixed reality scene. This video assumes that you have completed all the steps outlined in the last tutorial. If you have not, then please do so before continuing. You can find a link to the previous tutorial in the description. In this tutorial, we are going to focus on a mixed reality feature called plane detection. As I am sure you are aware, the Quest 3 allows you to scan the physical space around you. The Quest generates a 3D mesh based on this scan, accurately mapping the contours of your room's floor, ceiling and walls. It then constructs 3D planes to represent these surfaces, and this is what is known as plane detection. Your Quest saves the mesh and plane data in a room model. You can enhance this virtual space further by manually adding boxes to block out items of furniture. This furniture, by the way, is also saved within the room model as a collection of planes. Over the next couple of tutorials, you will learn how to visualize and use this plane data in your own app. Before we start, please ensure that you have a full scan of your room saved in your Quest headset. To access your physical space setup, select Settings from the Quest Home menu, then select Physical Space, and finally, Space Setup. It would be good to add some items of furniture to this setup, ideally a table or couch. Also, mark out any doors or windows. Avoid adding other types of objects such as lamps or plants, as these will be ignored by Unity's plane management system. Once your space setup is ready, connect your Quest headset to your PC via USB cable. OK, let's pick up right where we left off in the last video. Open the Unity scene that we were working on. In order to render our planes, we are going to need to import some starter assets from the XR Interaction Toolkit. We need to head back to the Package Manager. Go to the top menu bar and click Window, and then Package Manager. Find the XR Interaction Toolkit package and select it. On the Package Details page, select the Samples tab. From the top of the Samples list, import the Starter Assets. Next, find the AR Starter Assets and import these also. We will be using some AR plane visualization components from here shortly. Once the assets have finished importing, you can close the project manager. In order to give our app the ability to detect planes, we are going to make use of components from the AR Foundation package. AR Foundation is essentially a cross-platform framework for building AR or MR applications. If you can remember, in the last tutorial, AR Foundation was downloaded automatically as a dependency of the OpenXR Meta package. The OpenXR Meta package integrates with AR Foundation to provide access to the Quest 3's mixed reality features. One of these features, for which AR Foundation provides an API, is indeed plane detection. OK, so let's start adding the required components to our scene. Go to the scene hierarchy and select the XR origin. Now go to the inspector and click the Add Component button. Find and select the AR Plane Manager component. When working with the Quest, the AR Plane Manager retrieves planes from spatial data saved in your headset. It can then create game objects to represent these planes in your scene. Notice that the AR Plane Manager has a property called Plane Prefab. If we want to visualize our plane data, then we need to populate this slot with a prefab that specifies exactly how each plane is to be rendered. This is known as a plane prefab. As the AR Plane Manager cycles through each individual plane in the spatial data, it instantiates the plane prefab to render this plane in your scene. I want to show you something working as soon as possible. For this reason, we will first make use of a ready-made plane prefab. Later on, I will take you through the steps of creating a custom plane prefab, which you can then adapt to suit your own visual style. Go to the Project tab and select the Assets folder. Go to the Project Assets search bar and type AR Feathered Plane. You should now see the AR Feathered Plane prefab in the panel below. Incidentally, this asset is part of the AR Starter assets that we imported earlier. 
With the XR Origin still selected, drag the AR feathered plane into the plane prefab slot on the AR plane manager. OK, now save your scene and we are ready to build and deploy the app to your headset. When you view your app, you should see dotted planes representing the walls, floor, ceiling and furniture in your room. If you can't see this, then please check that you still have spatial data saved in your headset for your current location. Admittedly, the current plane rendering is less than ideal. It's hard to distinguish one plane from another. For this reason, I'm going to show you how to create your own plane prefab. We are going to use a simple color and line renderer so that we can clearly see each individual plane. We are also going to color code these planes according to their type. Before we do this, however, we need to set up a few things. We are going to need some simple interaction in our app. For instance, we will want to toggle plane rendering on and off. For this reason, the first thing we will do is get our app to register input from our touch controllers. In the scene hierarchy, expand the XR origin. Within it, you will find the left hand and right hand controller objects. Select the left controller. Go to the inspector panel. Notice that the hand controllers have these XR controller components attached. The XR controller component receives values from the corresponding touch controller. It then interprets them as an input action. You will notice that the XR controller component has a number of slots for various actions such as select or activate. These slots need to be populated by relevant input actions so that we can respond to the corresponding actions in our app. Setting up each of these input actions manually would take some time, so we are going to use a little shortcut. Make sure that the left-hand controller is still selected. At the top of the XR controller component, you will notice three small icons. Notice the middle icon, which looks like a couple of sliders. This allows us to select a preset. Click on it, and a small window will appear, listing the available controller presets in your project. These presets are, in fact, part of the XRI Starter Assets package that you imported earlier. In the Select Preset window, click on XRI Default Left Controller. Close the window. You will notice that the XR Controller's action slots have all been populated. Now in the Hierarchy view, select the right-hand controller. Once again, go to the inspector and hit the Presets icon in the XR Controller component. This time, select the XRI default right controller. OK, there is one more thing we need to do in order to enable these input actions within our app. Go back to the scene hierarchy and select XR origin. In the inspector panel, go to the input action manager component. Notice that there is a list called action assets. Click the plus icon at the bottom of this list. An element will be added to action assets. Click the target icon next to the empty slot. A Select Input Action Asset window will appear. Select XRI Default Input Actions and close the window. If you double-click on XRI Default Input Actions, it will bring up the Input Actions Editor window. Here you can see all the input actions that have been set up for XR headsets and controllers. Incidentally, if you are unfamiliar with input actions, then I recommend watching this tutorial, where I cover the fundamental components of Unity's action-based input system. Link in the description. OK, close the input action editor, and let's create a new build to check if our touch controllers are now being tracked. You should now have these red rays projecting out from your controllers. This means that your touch controllers are being tracked correctly. We are not going to be interacting with anything using rays in this tutorial, however. Therefore, I want to disable these rays for now, as I find them distracting. I'll show you a quick way to do this. Back in the scene hierarchy, select the left-hand controller. Go to the inspector, find the XR Ray Interactor component, and disable it. Now, select the right-hand controller, and disable the XR Ray Interactor here also. Now if you create another build, you will notice that the controller rays are no longer present. Alright, this tutorial is starting to stretch out a bit. Therefore, I'll save the implementation of a custom plane prefab for our next video. However, I've prepared the finished plane prefab in a Unity package for you, so you can get a sneak peek at what we will be working with in the upcoming tutorial. I'll show you where to download it. Open a web browser and go to this repository on my GitHub page. Link in the description. 
This repository contains assets designed to help you follow along with this tutorial series. To get the latest assets including our custom plane prefab, click on the latest release. Now we'll click on quest3mrcourseassets.zip. The zip file should download to your PC. Go to your downloads folder and extract the zip. Open the extracted folder and you will see that it contains a Unity package called AR Plane Colored. We want to import this package into Unity, so let's return to the editor. Go to the top menu bar and select Assets, Import Package, and then Custom Package. Find the AR Plane Colored Unity package and click Open. The Import Unity Package window will appear. Click the Import button. In the Hierarchy view, select the XR Origin. Then in Project Assets, open the Prefabs folder. Inside the folder, you will see the AR Plane Colored Prefab. Drag it over to the Plane Prefab slot on the AR Plane Manager component. Now rebuild and deploy your app. Put on your Quest headset and you will see colored planes representing the walls, floor, ceiling and furniture. The planes are color-coded according to what type of object or surface they represent. So for instance, the wall planes are white and the floor is green. Anyway, we will continue working with these planes in the next video. I will show you how our custom plane prefab is implemented. We will then explore some ways in which we can utilize this plane data in our app. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. But for now, goodbye and happy questing.